it in 2019, and it's impacted our, our family, especially our oldest daughter, Ainsley. Um, they're reiterating what we're teaching. Um, and so when you get it from multiple facets and different ways of presenting what the Bible says, it just brings uh, more clarity. It's just, you know, the di you think of a diamond, and there's so many different facets to a diamond. There's so many different angles, and it just brings a beauty, but it's still one diamond. It's just a, a beautiful thing that we can look at. And so we're excited. We're seeing the fruit of their ministry in our own family, and so we know that they're going to bring a lot. Um, Josh and Kate started ministry in 2005, so they've been at this for a while, and multiple facets. They have a lot to bring to the body of Christ, and their heart is for discipleship and mentoring, and, uh, and that's really what it takes. If you look at uh, discipleship in the Bible, Jesus had an apprenticeship. Uh, that's what he did with the disciples. He, he took them along with them, and he showed them how to do ministry, and that's really what discipleship is. not just hearing a sermon on a Sunday morning and uh, maybe doing a Bible st study with somebody. It's actually... You know, when you're out there, boots on the ground, and doing the things that God's called us to do, taking the church to the world and the message of the gospel and not just expecting people to show up to our church because we have great advertising and, and all that fun stuff, right? So it, people are who reach people, and so we're excited that you're here with us. And, uh, and again, we're, we have a lot in store for you this week, and so I'm going to go ahead and have them come on up if they're ready. And uh, they, they can uh, fill you in a little bit more about their family but they came all the way from Florida, and so that's a long drive. So that we give them kudos to that. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. We will be taking a love offering uh, tonight. So we want to sow into their ministry. They have no requests. Uh, they didn't have any financial obligations. But our, our philosophy is when people come, we want to sow into their ministry. And so uh, you can uh, do that by... Uh, you can, uh, there's a little envelopes back there. There's a box back there. We don't pass a plate around. If you want to drop it in, you could drop cash in there. You could do a check. Just write it out to resonate and put uh, Josh and Kate uh, or Root Bible or whatever you want, guest speaker, and we'll know that. Or you can do it online. Uh, you can go online and uh, you can select uh, designated offering. But anything given tonight, we know that goes to them online, and that's on ResonateChrist.com, and there's a little giving tab. So anyways, I just want to make sure, uh, uh, just pray about that. Uh, let's bless them, and we want to we want to send them home. Uh, and, well, actually, they're going to another stop after this, but we want to let them continue on their ministry in a great way. That was awesome. Thank you very much. I'm just going to move this pulpit about right here. I th no, just ki I'm kidding. They look like they're, they look like you're scared of us, like, oh. Hello, they're in the back, all right? This, first of all, this pulpit is far too small. You guys are going to laugh at us because we have like a million binders, books, and iPads. And we'll probably reach page one of the binders. So uh, my name is Kate. My husband is Josh. This is my family. You want to stand up? Right here. I've got my oldest. 13, go ahead and introduce yourself and, um, and pray for the people. Hello, my name is Wyatt, and I'm 13, and I guess I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for everybody here tonight, that will be a blessed and anointed night. Everyone will go home have safe travels home and a great rest of their week and I pray for a blessing on everybody in, Je uh, in Jesus name amen same for you hello hello my name is Winston and I am 10 years old and I'm going to pray for you now thank you Lord that uh, you bless everyone here tonight and that you bless them with safe travels, and that you, your anointing will come down on us tonight, that this will be an anointed night, that we know that you are in the room with us, and that everyone will have a rested night, and in Jesus' name, amen. Hi, everybody. My name is Willow, and... All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you. Right, nice Jeff, job. Then who's the best kid ever? Yes. Yes. Well, there's one mic. We're in trouble. One mic. All right. Do you have two? This one? Oh, the other one. They're so far, though. 
<laughs> well, keep me from getting to them. All right, so what do we do? We've been in ministry for 20 years. That hurts, actually, to say. But I tell you what, the Lord has things that he needs to get to his people. And when we started ministry 20 years ago, we, I was newly saved. I got saved when I was 23 years old. So my first time actually stepping foot in a church and understanding what I was doing was about 23 and a half years old. And even then, they would read from the word, and I was in Bible school, they would read from the word and they would say things like some of the things we sing in the worship song or, you know, blood covenant or, you know, uh, we're going to talk about Abraham, but we won't go over all of the details. Everybody knows Abraham, and I'm like, who's Abraham? You know, because it's like it, people think if you get saved, all of a sudden you understand. I don't know about you, but I didn't. I knew there was something different, right? But then I went on this journey, and this is where Root came in, is I went on this journey of trying to have peace in my life, trying to have joy in my life, trying to have love in my life, trying to have forgiveness in my life, trying to have all the fruits that I saw other people have in their life. And here I was going, wait a minute, I'm saved. I'm in Bible school, and I'm trying to produce these fruits. But I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I'm poor. I don't understand what they're talking about half the time. And when I want to ask a question, the answer is usually far above my head. I was in a predicament. So when we started ministry, the Lord said, you're going to develop in children what you'll later develop in adults. And he said, I want you to start there. So we started planting kids' churches and youth churches, upwards of 25 that are still operating to this day, to get the children knowing who they were. Now, what's that mean? Knowing that they didn't get saved and try to have peace, try to have joy, try to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, right? Because what happened when they go to kids' church? Will you just be kind? Where's your joy, right? Well, it happens with adults too, right? Uh, where's your joy? Will you just be nice? And you're like, yeah, I probably should be, but I don't feel like it, you know? Well, that was happening a lot. And the Lord said, listen, I need you to help my people be rooted. And we're like, I'm sorry, what was that again? And he said, I need you to help my people of every generation be rooted. Okay. He goes, this is what has happened to my precious people. They've come to know me, they've said yes to my son, and then they've set their sights on fruit. They get saved, their hallelujah moment, they leave the room, and they're like, okay, I'm going to be joyful. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be the best dad, the best mom. I'm going to be the best sister. I'm going to be the best daughter, the be right? I've got to immediately transform into the Watch best Christian out. that's ever walked in this church. Because whatever right now. I just felt so. inside when I said <laughs> yes, that's what I'm going to do. And, and then so, and then you take on it. What do you do? You start works of the flesh to try put on spiritual realities. You're looking around like, okay, let's see how, how everyone's dressing. Okay, I gotta dress just like that. Okay, I gotta see how everyone's talking. Okay, everybody says Father God every other word when brother, praying. So I gotta say that brother. when praying, Father God. Okay, got it. And we we take on all these these things that aren't who God has created us to be, and then we feel worn down or burdened by this Christianity that says it produces freedom. And in me, it's creating the opposite. And That's so right. it's, 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 it's this discovery moment of how people can, instead of reaching for the fruit and feeling like you fall short so many times, instead create the root that then the fruit naturally happens. How many would I, like I don't, that? I don't see. How many would like to stop trying to produce the fruit the Bible says? Right? Because it's exhausting. It's <laughs> it exhausting. Is. It's exhausting to produce spiritual fruit in the flesh. Mm -hmm. It is exhausting, tiring, and the opposite of what the Bible says that it is. So he said, enough. Help my kids be rooted. And we said yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, right now, what they do is produce fake fruit. So you go to church, amen, brother, 
Okay, mm-hmm. hallelujah, whatever that means. And, you know, they keep going to church because it is the tradition of man that we do it. And it says, gatherer together. All right, I've got that right. and I've got that, so I'm going to do it. But I seem to leave and try to attain the fruit in the flesh. No more fake fruit. So everybody say that. No more fake fruit. No more fake fruit. From this day forward. From this day okay. forward. No more mm-hmm. fake fruit. No more disappointment when you walk into those really ritzy houses and they've got the beautiful fruit in the middle. Once, one of my children, I won't say who, grabbed <laughs> one excitedly and bit into fake fruit. Okay, now, mm-hmm. if we continue as the body of Christ, and please know, this is not a beat down. This no. is a revelation. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is a revelation that had to come to me because I was exhausted. Okay, they grabbed that fruit excitedly, bit into it, and were highly disappointed. Well, a world looking for answers, even other sisters and brothers in Christ looking for the reality of Christ will be disappointed when they bite into our fake fruit. When they meet us outside of church and we're still trying to hold our joy and we're beating our kids, you know, like, <laughs> sister, <laughs> hey, you know, what I, you know what I mean? No, no more <laughs> fake fruit. We're going to stop disappointing ourselves, our families, and the world by just simply doing what God says we can do, but we first have to know what that is, right? Okay, so that's what we do. We help you understand what that is so that you can keep your focus on the root. We're going to tell you who that is and how that is, and he'll produce the fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Doesn't that sound a lot better? Yes. Well, it's uh, the same thing as when you think about planting plants, right? You don't, like, put the plant out on the concrete and be like, produce tomatoes for me, right? It, you know that wouldn't work. No, what do you, what do you invest in for, to get great tomatoes? Great soil. And so it doesn't matter. Even if you have a decent soil at your house, if you're anything like me, it's not good enough. And so you're, you're, bu- you're going to Lowe's or Home Depot and ba- buying the bags and the fertilizer. We're going to give this tomato plant the best root that it can have. We're going to plant it deep so that it has an extra little root system going and so it can support even more tomatoes. And worth. What am I focusing on? The root. Because I know if the root gets right, everything else happens naturally. And so that's why we're going to focus on some some root issues and some root identity uh, solutions this week so that you all by Sunday night are going to say, I'm a different person. Actually, you know what? I'm not a different person. I'm finally the person that God made me to be from the beginning, and I knew I was there. I just didn't know how to be me. I just, I kept trying and trying and failing and failing. And this is going to be a week of freedom, yes. of solutions, of encouragement, and being able to step into that reality that you knew was always there and didn't have a track to run on. And so that's what we're going to talk about. Our first thing, or I'm just want to jump into this, is that you already are who God needs you to be. Now, I don't know if you're anything like, like <laughs> me. When I first heard that, I was, wh- when God started speaking to me about that, I'm like, no, I'm not. I, you're, this is who you say that I am. Let me recount for you all the ways that I've fallen short today. Yeah. Let me talk about this, and, and I was dealing with this kind of thoughts, and then I did this, and, and I was, well, and was going all over over all the things where I was falling short, and he kept saying, but that's not you. That's called sin that's not who consciousness. I've, that's not that. who I've made you to be. Yeah. And, and it, he brought me to a place where I had to, to re-understand that I am a spirit, that I have a soul, and I live in a body. Yeah. This was a reality that I'd heard in Sunday school. Oh, yeah, I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. Woo, yeah, woo, good, good. Yep, yep. And I could even say it, you know, if, it, if a pastor or somebody was up front. <laughs> Remember, we're three-part beings. I am, a. Eh? And they were like, spirit, yeah. What does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> and so I had to then begin to dive into 
what really happened? And, and it goes all the way back to salvation. You, you can jump in. I'm, I'm taking over, but you got your own microphone. So, all right. It happens at salvation. When you get saved, what does the Bible say? The Holy Spirit comes in and makes you brand new on the inside. He takes away that old flesh, that old dominion, all of that sin consciousness, paid the price for all of that, wipes it away. And then what, like it says in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 21, that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God. He traded natures with us. He took that old sin nature, the one that falls short, the one that can't ever live up to enough, the one that always is stuck trying to do good enough but never feeling like you're ever getting there, having sin that, you know, I'm trying to conquer, but it feels like it's taken forever, and I don't know if I'll ever conquer this thing. He took all of that. And then what did he do? It doesn't stop there. It says, he who knew no sin uh, became sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He then put on us his righteousness. That's what happened when the Holy Spirit came in and made us brand new. He gave us himself as our identity. And I can't look at God and ever say, you know, Jesus really fell short in that area. <laughs> I can't. I don't see it in the Gospels. I don't see it anywhere in the Word. And But then, what does that mean for me? Why am I still struggling? It's because I'm not remembering. I'm a three-part being. I am a spirit that's been totally made brand new. When I go to uh, the portal, when I die... We always say walk through the portal. Forgive us, but that's what we mean. When I die... I have no doubt my spirit is going to heaven. But I can also say every thought that hits my brain right now is not all from my spirit. I have a whole lot of thoughts that are coming from where? Everywhere. Other people, uh, the TV, the radio, uh, what things I hear about on the news, and now that thought keeps popping back up. And random thoughts. All of a sudden, these random thoughts pop into your head, and then you get that random bad thought, and then all of a sudden, right after, all the guilt and shame. Oh, you horrible person. You call yourself a Christian. You just thought that about that person? I mean, how could you even? You have to go Sunday and get saved again. Just we call raise that, your hand slightly so nobody realizes you're, jumping to you're the doing double it again. Whammy. We call that We're the devil du double whammy. He gives you a, a bad thought and then makes you feel bad for it. Okay, because if you don't know who you are and you don't know your three parts, you've just taken it as your own, and then you feel terrible about it, right? This is where God came in and said, don't be sin conscious. And you're like, why? Because the enemy wants you to remember what? Your five senses and the fall of this world. That's what he wants you to remember. So if you can take mm -hmm. a thought, think it's your own, and then he can make you feel bad for it, that's what we call the devil devil whammy. Now just live there and be righteous, right, and produce fruit. Good luck. No. Know that you're the three parts. Know where it came from. Now, let us prove it to you by scripture really quick, okay. Mr. Micro Machine. Ephesians 2, <laughs> 4. Okay? Do you guys know, anybody as old as I am that remember the Micro Machine commercials where they talk no, really fast and they're like, okay, you're too young. Okay. too young. But God, who is rich in mercy. <laughs> Y'all have Bibles. Hmm. If you need a Bible, let Bring us know. We'll get device. you one. Yes. If you need an app on your phone, let us know. We'll get you one. We'll get it downloaded before you leave today. Just have the word with you, okay? But God, who Wait, is where rich are we at? in... Ephesians, what? You. Thank you. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses... I'm sorry, what? Dead, dead in trespasses. Were you all alive when you said yes to Jesus? Breathing? Like walked up and could say with your mouth, I received Jesus. And yet this right here says you were dead in trespasses. Quit it. Shut the door. This is so confusing. Yeah, you were dead because you were part of a what? A fallen nature. You were part of a seed, Adam, who said, I'm going to choose my amazing ability to know things more than God. And then I'm going to let everybody else do the same. And pff, 
Okay, that's a fallen nature. His seed. We were dead in trespasses. The world who doesn't know Jesus, they're dead and they don't know it. That's the big deal. They're dead and yet they can walk up and use their mouth to say, I'm going to believe in Jesus. So when you did that, when you became a child of God, because of his rich mercy, because of his great love and what he loved us, even when you and I were dead, dead, D-E-A-D, is an important word, we'll talk about it a lot, in trespasses, made us alive. Say what? Okay, we were just dead, now we're alive. And I didn't skip a beat, still breathing, talking, married, have children possibly. But I was dead and didn't know it. Yes, you were. You were dead and didn't know it. But he made us alive together with who? The new seed. Ooh, that's where the plants come in, all right? You are from a new seed, which means you have a new source of life. One seed produces one thing, a new seed produces another. Do you see how the scripture comes alive in you? I was dead, didn't even know it, but I was. And then Christ, with a new seed from God, made me alive. Hmm, all right. By grace you have been saved. There's that word. What's that mean? And raised us up together and made us sit together. Hold it. Hold the phone. Here we go. <laughs> in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Okay. <laughs> what did we read? We read five verses, three verses, three verses. And how many of you, your natural head's going, I'm sorry. I'm out. dead, I'm alive, and I'm seated with Christ, but I'm very much in this room with these crazy people preaching at me up here, okay? What's this revealing to us? What Pastor Josh just said. We are how many parts? Three. We had a dead nature from a seed. That's like a dead tree in the garden, okay? Still producing, but from the seed of death. When we came in Christ, we received life for the first time. The Bible actually says we become a new species. Okay, if you're into seeds and plants like we are, it's like a whole new seed you've discovered that never existed before the Bible actually says. Now you have a new source of life, and he seated you in heavenly places. This new source of life is seated right next to Christ. Now here lies the problem. Amen, hallelujah, I'm alive. Yes, true. Yes, I come from a new seed. Yes, I'm seated in Christ. But then I come over and I try to live as a German-Irish Jew. He comes over and tries to live as a Norwegian. Yep. And he goes back to what he knew in the flesh and in the soul or five senses. What's our five senses? Touch, smell, mm -hmm. hear, taste. No, no. Touch, taste, hear, see, see. right? Feel, okay? Your, your, your five senses are in touch <laughs> with this world. So now everything new has happened. A new seed has come. Life has come. I experienced his presence. I know something happened. And then I go back and try to continue to live my life as I knew it when I was dead. Now, I keep living that dead life. I'm German Irish too. I can get angry. Did you know my dad liked to drink beer, so I like to drink beer. That's what I do even though I'm saved. Did you know I have a short temper? It's just what I have. It was passed down from my dad. Did you know he doesn't like anything spicier than salt? That's just who he is, it, right? That is how I grew up, yes. Uh, salt and was extreme spices. My, well, actually... Well, I grew up in a very Norwegian town. Here it's more, you guys are more eclectic. In, we were just Hot dish all one sort. and a pinch so, of salt. So, yes. yeah. So our, our goal in our city growing up was your goal is to be the most mediocre you can be. Yes. In everything. You want the most mediocre, bland food, that's the one that's going to get celebrated. Yes. Oh, it doesn't taste like anything. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's whatever. And so that's how we became, like, you felt more valuable the more mediocre. If nobody noticed you, but you were still getting stuff done, and but not a lot of getting, because then you'd get noticed. But you don't want to get too much done, because then you'd get noticed. You just want to be slide right on through for everything in life. I don't want to do too much in marriage. I don't want to do too much with my kids. I don't want to do too much at work. I don't want to do too much. No, 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 no. Get noticed. The goal is to never be noticed for your entire life. We're going to be mediocre, man. So now. And so that's how I brought. 
my, I interpret it, okay, I'm brand new. So now I have God's ability to be mediocre. Right. This is going to be amazing. I'm going to be the most mediocre anybody has ever seen because they won't even see me. I'm mediocre. It's going to be the best. And so then I put all my energy into, okay, what can I do? behind the scenes that's what i'm gonna be the best behind the scenes guy that i can be so that never up front no no that's that's not that's not gonna be me because if you can't be up front and be mediocre that doesn't work people are actually looking at you people right. actually have to talk to you and right. you have to actually pretend that you actually are interested in what they're saying <laughs> and so that's not gonna be me i can't do that he listen that. no yes and and i interpreted who God was in me through who I was before him. before him. And that's not how it's supposed to be. That's not my identity. No, no, Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. And so I had all of these identity things, all of these personality traits and, and character things and thought I had the right to be this way, right. even as a Christian, because, well, you don't know my background. You don't know where I came from. I, I, I'm dealing with this and that. I've, my whole family's lines always dealt with this. So it's just who we are. Right. But I don't see that. But now we go word. to church. Right. But now I've added to my schedule church, which makes <laughs> me more happy because I have less free time. It's awesome. So now... I am living as I was when I was dead in trespasses, mm -hmm. even though I have access to all life and I've been seated next to Christ. Herein lies the problem, do you see? Because I leave, I get saved, I don't know how now to live in my new identity. Because I'm still fighting with my husband. I'm still angry with my children. I'm still misunderstanding what I experienced when I said yes to Jesus and what I sometimes experience at church and how it becomes my reality. Why? Because I'm living my identity from when I was dead in trespasses, just putting Jesus' name on it. I'm saved, brother, but I had a tough day. The devil's after me. I'm saved, brother, but my wife and I got in an argument. I'm saved, brother, but you haven't met my kids. I'm sa right? I'm saved, but. But when we get a hold of what it really means to be saved, to be translated, to be seated next to Christ, to become brand new, well, now we're going to have a new source, a whole new source to pull from. And I know some of you are looking at me like, it's impossible, Kate. There's no way. You don't know me. I do only be through Christ. I know you through Christ because I knew me before him. And I know what he showed me that most people will experience because they'll try to live dead in trespasses while having life available to them. So you get around other believers and that life starts to stir up. And that's what the Bible talks about, the seed being planted along the path, right? You're in church and you feel so good and, and worship is amazing and you feel that seed, that new life that's inside of you being stirred up by others who might know who they are all around you, that fertilizer, that gathering, it's so important. But then you leave and you leave that new life and you go live your dead and trespasses life and wait for next Sunday. And now, that's why you feel so, so dry, so empty, and you're like, I just got to get back to church. Because that's, my, that's my, that's my source. But it's not. And it's not. And, and it comes from, again, we're a three-part being. Okay. So. John 15. You're the cutting The one me I wanted off? to start with. You're all in trouble. Right, right, you're welcome. Right. Hi, this is what we do. Okay. John 15, <laughs> verse 3. I actually love this. The Lord just showed this to me. I wish I had. So you guys were in the process of moving. I have a four-version Bible. I don't have it right now. John 15, verse 3. You are cleansed and pruned already. I'm sorry, what? Because of the word which I had have given to you. The Amplified says, those are the teachings I've discussed with you. Dwell in me. And I will dwell in you. Live in me. That's what dwell means. What does that mean? That's mean it means where you're going to pull your source of life. It's not going to be what I knew. It's not going to be my heritage as a Catholic, as a German, Irish Jew, as a Norwegian. As what? Yeah, that is dead. So he's like, now you're going to live in me. And I will live in 
you. What? Me? Do you know the thought that just came across my head? Uh, I actually do. All right? Just as no branch can bear fruit of itself. Oh. Huh. Detective Kate up here. Without abiding in being vitally united to the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. See my problem here. We have a church that wants to bear fruit, but doesn't yet know how to abide in him. That's all. And he actually made every effort in his word to teach us exactly how to do that. But we have to know. That's it. So if you abide in him, what are you going to produce? Fruit. Who wants a little more love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in their life? Mm -hmm. I do. So you know what I have to do? Abide. Dwell. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. That's what your flesh will tell you. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that before. Your unrenewed soul also might say that, you know. You're going to open the word and go, I just don't know. I don't know where to go. It's too hard. I'm going to go empty the dishwasher. No. Okay? He's telling you, of course, it's the one thing your dead, unrenewed part of you is going to go to, and it's what the enemy will draw you with, is abiding and dwelling in him. If he can keep you from doing that, what can he keep from you? A fruitful life. That's it. Oh, snap. All he has to do is keep you from dwelling and abiding. Because unless you do that, you will not bear fruit. But guess what? Here's the good news. By the time we're done here, you're going to know exactly how to Monday through Saturday abide and dwell and pull from and be led by and surrender everything that you knew because you won't be able to resist what he reveals you are now. Sound good? And a big key to that is understanding, again, three-part being. Uh, we are a spirit that's been made brand new. Yep. We have a soul. When I got saved, I didn't instantly only have God's thoughts. Anybody had a thought today that probably wasn't from God? Eh, probably all of us, right? Since I was driving. And I what did. is that? That's our, our soul. Our soul is made up of our mind, our will, and emotions. And just because you got saved, he did not, I don't see in the word where he changed our brain and made it brand new. We still have the same brain. And if you go to Romans 12, 2, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Who, who is he giving that command to? The people, not to God. God, transform these people's minds. They're thinking bad. Just do something about it. Yeah. I wish it would. Wouldn't that be sweet if it was that way? But, but actually, we'd be missing out on a partnership and a unity of doing life with God if we just relied on him for everything. It would be like choosing to stay in the baby stage. Right? You think about a baby. When, when you, they're first born, they need the parent to do everything for them. Everything. Literally everything. But then as they get older, then you're able to then do life with them, not for them. And it's a new level of, of unity and connection that's available that was never there when it was just a uh, serve me, serve me, serve me. I need this. I need this. I need this. You know, we, even with our own kids, we're seeing that. Right. Willow's five, and she has a whole lot of, here's all my needs. <laughs> Fix them all on my time frame. <laughs> now, which is and now. And uh, as loving parents, we coach her through that. And I've gone to God that way. Here's all my issues. <laughs> Deal with them. But... There's another level that God wants us to get to where instead of us, and, and honestly, new Christians, you see God do that for them. I, I've, been, I've been one of those that was sitting in church and I had a need and this new person got saved and that need was instantly met. And I was like, how the heck did that just happen? You know how long I've been saved? I've been saying, I'm dealing with this, and they just got saved, and then poof, it's just give it. 
Hello, God. What's the deal? Do I need to get saved again? What's the deal here? It's because he's, it's not an obstacle. It's an opportunity to develop a greater relationship with him. And, th- and that comes through choosing to transform how I think so that how I think lands up with him. And the more, how does that happen? With inputting how he thinks. Right. Choosing to input more of, I'm going to take this word and instead of just doing my, my five-minute reading on a timer, I haven't done that. I'm going to set five minutes. I'm going to read the Bible five minutes and then I'm like, how long has it been? Four and a half minutes. <laughs> oh, got 30 seconds left. I can do this. Anybody ever? Yeah, okay, maybe not. It's just, it's just me. And then that didn't feel like it was enough. So then I stretch it out. I'm going to do 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna, you know how spiritual I'm going to be if I do 10 <laughs> minutes? Yeah. All this Honey, stuff. Honey, I'm in my <laughs> word. Uh, uh, Wait I'm for the timer. Yes. <laughs> but where was my reliance on? What was I trying to do? Not connect, not build relationship. I was just putting in works because I felt more good about myself. Yeah. Really. But when I go to, to the word, when I go to prayer, when I go to worship with a heart of, I want to connect with you and see life from your perspectives. Show me what that is through your word. Who do you say that I am? What have you already accomplished for me? Yeah. What is your plan for today? And he'll begin to reveal that to you. He'll begin to develop that relationship with you and as you do your mind begins to line up with what you're the most focused on we all know that work how that works right that's easy we we i've seen people we're, we'll talk about it if we ever get to it like worry my grandma was a master worrier she could do that at the drop of a hat. I'm going to find something and I'm going to be freaked out about it and it's going to mess up my whole life and it's going to stop everything because this is freaky. She would meditate on it. She she would would meditate on it. And it became the focus and guess what she created? The thing she was freaked out about. It was in in whatever area. It was just what that's what she created. Because what? It was her only focus. We've seen it in our own lives. Good and bad. I'm going to be solely focused on knocking this project out. I am shutting everything else off. I'm closing the doors. I'm locking it. I am powering through until I get this done and get it done right. What happens? You get it done. You get it done right. You achieve the thing that you're focused on. I've had other things. Sins. Okay, I'm not going to think this way anymore about <laughs> that, especially about that person, because that person, oh, my gosh, they just love you. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. That's what I, God, I, that, sorry, I did it again. I'm not going to think about that, that kind of way anymore. All right. I'm, I will not think that way. I will not think that way. I'm going to meditate on not thinking that way, because if I don't think that way, then I'm just going to keep thinking this way because I'm focusing on it. I'm just focusing. So I'm gonna, it's going gonna, gonna to come out in what I say and what I do. And, oh, no, that's the opposite of what I want. I don't want that. So, but, but what's the focus? The thing you don't want to do. And Paul even talks about it. the thing that I do not want to do, I do. I do. Why? Because it was his focus. He's like, I'm striving not to do this, yet I keep going into it. Where was the focus? On who God had already made him be? Or is it the thing you're trying to conquer? Where does freedom come from? Where does life come from? Jesus, that's his what, perspective. That's what the Bible calls dead his works. Life. So when you hear that, that's what it's saying. You are working to attain something he's already given you, dead works. That's all that means, okay? Mm-hmm. So what are you doing? You're working to earn what's already yours. Write that down. I'm working to earn what's no, already no. mine, okay? I'm that stopping. That is dead works. That. No, equals dead works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay? That's when you go into the trap of busyness. I must read. I must set a timer. I must volunteer at church. I must do this. I must think this. I must not think this. That's dead works. Where's that coming from? Your unrenewed soul and your flesh. Now, what if you flip that? What if you flip that just like 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 17 says? Okay, now I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. Why is that? 
because uh, we've met Brian Simmons and we've researched Brian Simmons, but that's not why. We read it because it adds to what we've memorized. Because I don't know about you, after I've read a verse so many times, I can read it again, but I don't really read it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm going, oh, I know this verse. And I just read over it. So that's why we're going to do it in this. So then, from now on, we have a new perspective that refuses to evaluate people merely by their outward appearances. For that's how we once viewed the anointed one. Who's the anointed one? Jesus. They knew him by the flesh. Okay? That's the only way they knew him at first. Only by the flesh. Even though he was anointed, even though he was filled, that's the only way they knew him, by the flesh. But once he, what, went to the Father and sent the Holy Spirit, he said, now you'll no longer see each other that way. So now, how, well then how? Because I don't know about you, I see my flesh, I gotta look in the mirror, I gotta put makeup on it, you know what I mean? But no longer do we see him after, here it is, what's flesh mean when you say it, really? You read flesh in the Bible and just think of this, right? What's it mean? It means limited human insight or your five senses. Am I gauging myself and others by my limited human insight? Okay? Are we standing in front of it? First, did I say first? Second, thank you. Second Corinthians 5, <laughs> 16 through 17. Limited human insight. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, oh, we read that over here in Ephesians, right? We also read in John, we're rooted in him, dwelling in him. So if anyone is enfolded into Christ, what happened when you said yes to him? That he has become an entirely new person. What about the German Irish Jew in me? What about the Norwegian in him? Wait a minute, what? Where's my identity? Don't you know that's who I am? Don't you know who my father is? Don't you know who my mom is? Don't you understand? You can't take away my identity. Well, he just did. You become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. <laughs> I like that because of Star Wars. Don't you? Whatever's related order. to the old order. I'm sorry, we're nerds at heart. Whatever's related to the <laughs> old order has what? Vanished. That's it. Behold, everything is fresh and new. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, everything didn't seem fresh and new, right? So what's he talking about? He's talking about what he's put in you. And now it's our goal to find out what that is, which means I can no longer choose to use my limited human insight or my five senses to determine anything. What? Are you still in a body? You are. But he's now given you an ability to no longer live by limited human insight. What version do we have up here? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay, mm -hmm. that's 17. 17. Can you go back to 16 for me? Let's see what version you have here. Is it TPT? New King James. Nice. No, that's no, okay. New King James, good. Let's see what he says. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him thus no longer. Okay, when you break this down in the Greek, you don't have to do that. But when you do. Understanding that flesh means limited five senses insight. or limited human insight. We only knew him. Remember, Jesus came back, and they're, like, walking down the road with him, and <laughs> they're calling this guy teacher. And in a moment, all of a sudden, they realize it's Jesus. So what happened? They knew him by limited human insight until they were given the ability to see him in the spirit. And then they're like, hold it, uh, hold the phone. You're Jesus. Yeah, who did you think was walking and talking with you? Well, see, I was going by limited human insight, so you didn't look like the guy that I just spent three years with, so that's what I was going by. Well, now I've given you a new way. And then he even instructs them after that little path walk, you're going to get the Holy Spirit, right? You're going to go wait for him. Why? Because you're going to need a guide. If I'm not going to live by my five senses, I'm going to need some help. Right? If I'm not going to live by my limited human insight any longer, I'm going to need a little assistance, Lord. Because all that I know is my emotions, what I taste, touch, feel, hear, smell. Only how to react in the flesh when somebody treats me a certain way. But now you're telling me 
I don't get to rely on that. I get to rely on you. He and I often say, we no longer have the luxury, you can write this down, of having my own opinion. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. I know, someone's about to write that down. They're like, I can't write that down. I have my own opinion. But don't want the luxury of it. Your opinion, apart from Christ, is limited human insight. So if you want an opinion about someone, about yourself, about thoughts you're having, about your family, about your spouse, about anything, Mm -hmm. and you want it apart from Christ, it's limited human insight. And he says, what's that going to produce? Not fruit. Death. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's the seed that it came from. Remember, we were dead. Now, if I'm going to keep drawing from that seed, guess what? I'm going to draw from the kingdom of death, destruction, and loss. So why, when I go to church, do I hear that I have life, and yet in my marriage, I'm struggling struggling with death, destruction, and loss? Here's your answer. I've been trying to operate by limited human insight. When I can no longer know myself or any man after that. I love that. I love that. Do you love that? I love that. Because now the pressure's off, guys. The pressure's off you. It's okay to say, I don't know. I need to either go to the word or find out from the spirit how to respond to you right now. I need a moment. Okay, well, the unrenewed person's like, okay, and you're like, I know how I would have reacted in this moment through my limited human insight. However, I need a moment. That's okay. We actually call it shuddy season. When there's a time in our life, a situation in our life, a circumstance in our life that we still are struggling to see through limited human insight, we speak nothing about it until we can say what he says. We call that shuddy season. That's the reality of our new life. And that's where people get like, wait, I don't have to be led by my flesh? No. I don't have to be led by sin? Nope. I don't have to be led by every thought that comes into my mind? Nada. No. But you need to first identify what it is. It's limited human insight. And it's all you knew or had access to before Christ. But then he says, don't do that any longer because now in Christ, you're an entirely new person. So we have to find out what is that identity. And what identities have I taken on that are outside of God's best plan? Right. And she's mentioned she's mentioned a couple already. My my uh, heritage, my ancestry, my upbringing, is no longer my identity. Right. If you look in the Word, it, it clearly says that we have God the Father, we're co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Right. So that family tree is real short. <laughs> <laughs> That's real short. That we need to get and one of those. that is my identity. I've taken on. I'm now a child of God. I'm not. That means I've. He's taken me out of what I naturally knew, and he's put me into a spiritual reality, and this is my identity. So where do I get? Oh, well, yeah, you. You don't know what my history is because my brother raised from the dead, paid for sins for everybody. That's my. That's my identity. He paid the price for everything so that I can just you know. That's who, that's my identity, not who who I was. Busyness, she mentioned that. So many people, that's a world, a natural thing. I get my identity by being busy. How many have ever gone into work and had, or or even into church and had a conversation that starts off with this? Hey, 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 how are you doing? How was your week? How was your weekend? Oh, man, it was just busy. It's just maxed out, you know. It's just, you don't know what's all going on in my life. Oh, yeah, but, boy, but. You're only doing that. Let me tell you about what I got going on in my life. It's so much worse than that. Oh, and everybody's one up in themselves on busyness, showing that they're getting their value from busyness. This is my identity. Don't challenge my identity. Don't because being busy is what where I feel like I'm getting my worth. And if you're busier than I am, then you're worth more than I am in my own eyes, and I don't like that. So I got to add more stuff on. I got to be the busiest. <coughs> How are you doing over there? <coughs> oh, man. It's because you interrupted me. I just, it could be. <coughs> so, so when bis- you say that, though, I've got to say it again. It reminded me of the path. I'll, I'll right, always interrupt water. him. Um, water. That water. 
Um, when you're talking about the seed on, can we pull that scripture up? Uh, the nope. sower. The sower who sowed the seed. Let's see here. It's in multiple. So let's see. Let's pull it up here. Because I want you guys to make a connection here. I hope you're taking notes. Okay. Here we go. The sower went out and sowed the seed. Here we go. The sower went out to sow the seed. Luke 8, 5. And he sold some, fell along a traveled path, and that was trodden underfoot. And the birds ate their share up of it. And some seed fell on the rock. And as soon as it was sprouted, it was withered away because it had no moisture. And other seed fell in the midst of the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it off. And some seed fell in good soil. Well, that's good. And grew up and yielded a crop a hundred times as great. As he said these things, he, ca he called out, he who has ears to hear, let him be listening and let him consider and understand by hearing. And when his disciples asked him the meaning of this parable, which I'm sorry, I love, because he's like, first, uh, have an ear to hear what I'm saying. And the disciples are like, what are you saying? You know, but at least they asked, okay? When they said to him, what's the meaning of this parable? He said, to you, it has been given to come progressively to know, to recognize and understand more strongly and clearly the mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. But for others, they are in parables so that though looking, they may not see and hearing, they may not comprehend. That doesn't seem very good, does it? Now that's why Jesus is here because why? There's no spirit that's been poured out on all flesh yet. 11. Now the meaning of this parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those along the traveled road are people who have heard. Then the devil comes and carries away the message out of their hearts that they may not believe or acknowledge me as their savior, devote themselves to me. So that first one are those that don't choose salvation. I want you to understand that, okay? There are those that, that can't quite get that seed of salvation. All right, 13, and those upon the rock are the people who, when they hear the word, receive and welcome it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time, a trial and temptation fall away, withdraw, and stand aloof. And as for what fell among thorns, these are the people who hear, but they go on their way. They are choked and suffocated with the anxieties and cares, and riches, and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not ripen or come to maturity or perfection. Before I go on to 15, what's happening there? Because you're like, oh, here's the fruit, the root again, okay? What's happening? I'm saved, so I know I'm not the first one, but I could be one of the other two. If I come to church, hallelujah, I feel good, yes, brother, and then I get in the car, and I'm angry with my family, and I'm struggling at work, and I live a, a different life that looks more like the world with Jesus' name stamped on it, right? But what's happening there? The cares of this world, what he just talked about, the anxieties of this world. So now all of a sudden, I'll come in and I'll say, yay, hallelujah, that's a good word, brother, but now I let the cares of this world or my limited human insight take over. So on one side, I'm hearing the word, I'm hallelujah, it feels so good. Has anyone experienced this before? Because I did when I was first saved. And then I left and I'm going, Oh, I get a phone call, and something's wrong with my mom, and I get another phone call, and my friend's upset, and right? Now the cares of this world are like, whoop, and I'm going right to human insight. Here's what Kate would do. Here's how Kate would respond. Kate, 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 Kate. No Jesus. So what happened there? The cares of this world stole it away. But what we know is we can keep that from happening. That's what was happening with him, with what he just said. You, what if you are going to live with one foot in the world, anyone know that scripture? And one foot in the kingdom of God, then you're going to receive nothing. Is that because God's up there going, sorry, not for you? No. It's because you're stuck between old nature, the dead guy who no longer should be in control, and God having full control. And so when anxieties or worries of this world come along, instead of doing what the word says, which if you haven't put it in, you don't know what to do, you respond out of old nature. And what's that produce? Death, destruction, and loss. All while you try to produce the fruit that you read in the word, right? So that is the path. Now let's go on to the good, right? 
All right, 16. Is that right? 16. No, 15. But as for that seed in the good soil, the soil is your heart. All right? When Jesus came in, he gave you a new heart, softened heart. These are the people who, hearing the word, hold it fast in a just, noble, and virtuous, and worthy heart, and steadily bring forth fruit with patience. Oh, patience, Lord. Patience. No one, after he has lighted a lamp, covers it up with a vessel or puts it under a dining table or a couch, but he puts it on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. How does that go together? That goes together because the one who receives the word and stays in shuddy season until they understand the fruit is going to be produced if I find out what he says before I go opening my old nature mouth if I put myself in shuddy season and I continue to hear the word and study the word and lean into his voice I don't rush in with answers from my limited human insight guess what he's going to be seen and steadily that fruit's going to be produced in my life and all of a sudden, I'm going to see someone I've struggled my whole life loving. And I've prayed to God, and I've asked God, and I've, I've told him, I'm trying so hard, I have to love this person. And I will walk in one day after a, an extended amount of shuddy season, and I will genuinely be a love for that person. And I will shock my old nature self. Why? Because I refuse limited human insight. I refuse to beg for fruit. I refuse to beg for answers that he says are already mine in his word in my heart. If I'll have patience, his light will come forth. Now I don't have to pretend the fruit. I can be the fruit because I do what he says do. That's it. That's you guys. Limited human insight stinks because it just keeps you trapped in dead living. Really what the world values are things that keep you trapped. Yep. Busyness and patience are pretty much opposite. I, I, I've, I've even tried to that. I'm trying to be patient with you. Can we just get this done? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. That's, that's not patience, right? Yeah. God's way, patience, longevity, perseverance. World's way, busyness. I need it now. I'm just, world's way power i want the title i want to have more authority i want to have a bigger position i want more recognition i gotta push harder at work so that i can achieve that next level so that i can get all this stuff and people will recognize who i really am jesus way i'm a servant challenges everything that that we think we have to pursue to earn our own value in our own eyes and in the lives of those around us. And it's laying that down and saying, God, who did you make me to be? I can't define myself by my busyness. I can't define myself by my past. I can't define myself by my power or authority or lack thereof. I can't divine myself by my activities, right? I don't know. That's what I used to do all the time. Who are you? Oh, I'm a carpenter. What is that? I'm defining myself by my activities, not by who I actually am. And so what we're trying to do today is we're getting to the place we're recognizing I don't know who I am. <laughs> If I can't use my past, I can't use my power or authority or lack thereof. Yeah. I can't use my busyness or my action. What's left? God's left. And as we spend time the next few days okay. discovering who he says that he already has made you to be, you're going to have the freedom to Find your fulfillment and your acceptance, purpose. your purpose, and your power to live his way in that, 
not in all these other things we tried to do to achieve something that we already had. One of, our fav- one of my favorite verses, I have about a thousand of them, is for Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. I'm reading this out of the Passion Translation again just because I'm not used to it. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. How much was already deposited in us? Everything. Everything Everything we need for life and godliness has already been deposited in you. Now we're going to find out who that is. It's going to be good. I can't wait. You're about to step into... Peace, joy, rest, like actually rest, not rest on the outside, but on the inside, you're still going a million miles an hour. Anybody ever had that? It's it's like a a movie, a football movie I like where he talks about being like a duck on the pond. On the surface, everything looks like nice and calm. You don't see the ducks hardly moving, you know, still pedaling around. And underneath, it's just like, <laughs> those feet are just going to town, you know, getting it where it needs to go. And he goes, you're like a duck on the pond. And that's how we can be as Christians when we're, we're trying to achieve something on the inside that he's already finished. Right. It's a finished work. We just have to understand with our heads who that is and accept it as our new reality. So we know that we don't use our flesh to determine anything anymore. We know that we don't use the, what, soulish part of us, which is in contact with our flesh that's unrenewed. So what do we use? Our spirits. We'll be led by our spirits. The sons of God are led by his spirit, which is in contact with your spirit, the new you. Okay, Galatians 2, 20. I have been crucified with Christ. I don't remember going there. Do you? And yet it was done. In him, I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live. Go ahead and write that down. It's no longer I that live. It is no longer I who live. If you want to be saved and you want to be seen on the other side of a recreated heaven on earth, this is your life. I no longer live. But Christ the Messiah lives in me, and the life I now live in the body or the flesh, five senses, I live by what? Faith. Mm-hmm. What Which is, is faith? in adherence to, reliance on, and complete trust in mm-hmm. the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What's that mean? When I come into a situation where I want to react the way I used to react, in shuddy season, I put complete reliance on. God. When I come in and I encounter something that I normally would have walked away from, angry, slammed a door, whatever, I say no, and I put my complete reliance on God. And you know what the world sees that is? Foolishness. Be prepared. People that don't know the Lord, even ones that call themselves Christians, when they see you not react by your five senses, will be quick to call it foolishness. They will, because the world calls the wisdom of God foolish. But God says that where we were, our limited human insight, you don't realize how foolish that was. I'm going to go ahead and trust him and put my full reliance on him. And we're going to help you guys do that same thing and see yourselves the way he sees you so you're actually activated to walk it out in faith. So I want to give you guys a challenge. As you're leaving tonight, uh, maybe when you get home, if you can take a second or whatever, just to sit down with your, bar- with your Bible and with God. Say, God, who have you already made me to be? Just grab a piece of paper and a pen. I actually, I'd say pencil. I'd say write it. I'll tell you what I hear to say. Do it with a pencil. Write it. Just write down the thoughts that are popping in your head. There's no right or wrong. There's no false, true, right now. You're just, once you get on the paper, that gives you something to begin talking to him about. Yeah. Remember, we're, we're, 
we're not just, here's all my stuff, God, pff, deal with it. We're learning to tr be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so as we write some of these things down, as we go back over them and ask God, all right, is this really who you made me to be? There will be some things he's like, nope. That's something that you've put on trying to achieve. Or learn trade. Uh, uh, a to inch. earn a reality yeah. that you already have in me. So, no, cross that one out. Or he may, you may be sitting there, and he'll say something, and you'll be like, I'm not even writing that down. That is so not me. Write it down. It gives you ability to have some real conversations with God yeah. and to hear his voice on who he's already made you to be. If I'll give you this. If everything on that list you could do without him, then that's probably not who he's made you to be. That's who you are without him. Yeah. And so as you look at that list and some of the things feel impossible, that's okay. Because it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. So this has to look like who only he could be through me. And you'll get closer to who he's already made you be. So what's that look like? He wrote a list. I wrote a list. This is an honest-to-goodness <coughs> assignment. If you want to move on, you need to do this. Okay? You're going to write down everything that comes to mind. If if someone were saying, this is who I am, if you were describing yourself, that's what you're going to write down, okay? What you think of, what God thinks of, and you're going to give it to your spouse if you have one, if they're willing to participate. Or a great friend. Or a good friend, and have them look it over. Who's a Christian. Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who has the spirit of God in them, all right? And, and look it over. Let this be a growing list, because your, I, I wrote down things. I was a graphic designer. I used to have my own graphic design company. I used to find my worth in that. I used to um, uh, think I, I had to be happy all the time and joyful, and that's the only way that people would want. Like, I had all sorts of stuff written down there. And the Lord just was like, this you learned from this person, this you picked up from here, this, okay, all limited human insight. And all of a sudden, he's like, hey, I knew you before the womb and before a dead nature. And here's who I've created you to be. And that list has been ever growing as the old nature is renewed, right, and no longer accessed, and I'm hearing what God says. I'm willing to lay down, that's not who I have to be to be accepted. I'm willing to lay down, that's all I knew, and that's how I proved my worth. When I was willing to lay, when he was willing to lay down, uh, we're only behind the scenes people, right? It was, but we weren't until we wrote it out and allowed God to remove and add by his voice. Now, some of you might be sitting there and going, how oh, by his voice? Okay? Right now, you're just going, that sounds great, but I hear preachers say that all the time. By his voice. I heard his voice. This is what he said, right? How, what is that? A small, still voice. That's it. You'll be writing, and you'll feel this check, or you'll feel a good feeling on the inside. That's it. The word that's says it. that he'll lead you by his peace. And that's honestly what it's uh, inside of some writing that something down. I'll either kind of feel like a eh, kind of like a static, a check, a yeah. uh, red flag. Uh, I don't there's a bunch of different ways you can describe it of hang on. And then don't just like that's not me. <laughs> it made me Talk to him about it. Maybe and then there's perfect. You wah. know, like that's no good. Yeah. yeah. Other times there will be something you write down. That mentally you might be struggling with, but it just seems right. It just, there's something on it, on the inside, that just says, yes, this is good, this is right. So you write it down. So write it down. Doesn't mean you never have to reevaluate it, because I've convinced myself things were of God, that were of me before, and He'll bring it back up at times. Yep. Hey, remember that list? What do you, what, let's, talk, let's touch on this one. Yeah. But I'm telling you, if you can take the time just to write down, God, who do you say that I am? And begin drawing it out. It, you're going to find a new strength to be that because it's right there in front of your face. So, so after you have your list written, right at the top, 
right really big at the top, and this should become your vernacular for the next few nights and on. Who told you that? Okay, write that big at the top. Who told you that? Before you start your list, who told you that? And the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal where that identity came from and whether or not it's from him. Right? This came from your mom. This came from this time in high school. This came from your best friend. Whatever, right? But this isn't who I've called you to be. This isn't who I've called you to be. And he'll take it off and, and he'll put on what belongs. Oh, I'm going to let you guys go with this because we could just keep going. Even, even if it's good doesn't mean that it has to be God. I've done that before. You, see, you meet someone like, like Pastor Jeff and you're like, he's the best guy in the world. Oh, my word. How could I ever become like Pastor Jeff? All right, I'm going to make my list what I think Pastor Jeff is. Because if I can just be, be a, a Christian leader, like that, pastor, it's going to be uh, yeah. awesome. Yes. And so then I start to try to put on Pastor Jeff's identity as my identity and pull traits from them and this preacher I saw on TV and I went to this conference and, there's, uh, and I'll uh, design a person that no one's ever any of all of those things. And you'll never be that. It's finding out, okay, just because it's Pastor Jeff's race to run and he's running it and it's well. fantastic and God's weight is on it and his presence shows up and it's, it's good, doesn't mean that's God's plan for me. So I got to, just because it's his race to run doesn't mean it's everybody's race to run. I got to find out who did you make me to be. Sorry. Thank you, Lord. And then he'll show you. All right, so if we strip away... All action, if we strip away all desire to earn our worth, who has God created you to be from the beginning? The Bible calls it a predestined purpose and plan for your life, that he's created for you before you were in the womb. Who wants to know that? Who wants to live it? The Bible says there's a book being written about you in heaven and already written, and your life will be compared to it. The cheat sheet is he's giving you everything you need to live that life. But are we willing to let go of the old nature, the dead man, that which has passed away? And if we are, then we have an exciting time of walking out what he's predestined us to do Be and equipped us. He didn't just say, here's what you'll do. He said, also, here's everything you need to do it. So if you're out there, what, you add in? Nope. If you're out there and, and you don't know for sure, guys, Honestly, if you've given your life to the Lord, if you're sitting there and you're like, I make, I make eye contact. That's just what we do because we're the body of Christ. And if you're not yet, you will be. If you don't know for sure that you've given your life to Christ, then this isn't accessible to you. That's not because he's holding it back. It's because literally you must partake of the new seed available in Christ Jesus by faith to have access to these things. Now, you have people who think they're saved and aren't. A simple question of the Lord will let you know. You can say, Father, am I really saved? You know where you'll hear it? Right here. The answer. Okay? Now, if you're sitting there and you don't hear an answer or you hear a no, then you simply just have to, what? Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And we can walk you through that. Because the minute you do that, you become a new creation. You now have access to life and life abundantly. And not only access, but the ability to actually walk it out. But it only comes with salvation. So if you don't know for sure you're saved, just let me know right now, and it changes tonight. There's no condemnation. I think I got saved 15 times before I knew it really happened. Can I just be honest? I was 23 years old. I didn't know. And then I had a super encounter I'll share with you tomorrow night with the Lord. It was awesome, but I still had a lot to learn. And I learned a lot of religious tradition before I learned what he actually wanted to say. So is there anyone out there that just isn't sure yet you are saved? Let me know. We'll walk you through it. Okay, awesome. That means you already have access to this whole new life. That means you have that seed right now. That means it's not waiting till later. It just means you no longer weekend at Bernie's it. Anyone know what I mean when I say that? Okay. You no longer drag the dead guy around so you can have a good time in the world. Drop the dead guy. Go into shutty season. Find out what he has to say over these next few nights and begin to live the abundant life he has for you to live and watch that fruit be produced in your patience 
and reliance on him. All right, let's pray. God, I thank you. You are so good, and you're always speaking to us. God, you've given us your spirit so that we can hear your voice, know your will, and walk in the fullness of it. So I thank you that as they earnestly seek you, they'll find you. As they learn to hear your voice, you'll teach them, and you'll show them who you've already created them to be from the foundations of the world for this season of life to make your impact in themselves and the world around them. You're so good, God. Thank you. Father, I thank you. Um, Ma'am, right here, I've got two in green, right here. Um, I've got a word for you. The Lord says, uh, the weary days are over, okay? I see a weight that was just hanging on your shoulders. Actually, it was a little bit on your head and on your shoulders. And the Lord said it was weariness, weariness in doing good specifically, he said. Okay, and, and that labor to do good ends now. All right, there's a new infilling coming into you because you're willing to lay it down. Before you weren't, but you are now. And he says for that reason, his anointing is there and that weariness drops off. There it goes. Thank you, Lord. Totally gone. Actually partnered Thank with that. You. Have you had some neck pain issues or pain in this area? Yeah. That's leaving at the same time. Yeah. Where is it? Test it out. Go ahead. Yes. Be honest. Okay. Uh, Great. That's limited human insight. So that anxiety, that weariness is dropping off. Okay? And no more limited human insight. That doesn't belong to you. The world wants you to think that belongs to you, right? I sit behind a desk, so no. No, leaves now because you know how much he loves you and that new seed of life in you is released and those lies break off. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you don't have to deal with that anymore. No. That's Test it out. Awesome. How is it? Tomorrow after work, mm -hmm. you're going to walk out and you're like, man, <laughs> I actually feel kind of loose right now. This is yes. nice. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Lord. Uh, you, young lady, really quick, in the black, yes. Um, uh, I feel like your voice has been stifled. You have things to say, but uh, I saw like a muzzle in the spirit um, that maybe things you've said before in the past haven't been received. And so the Lord says that's coming off, but it's not coming off because the old nature you had something to say. It's coming off because the destiny he's put in you is being released. Now when you open your mouth, things change. Ears hear and people listen. All right? So be willing to do it because you have things to say by his spirit. Not by your infinite wisdom, which I can tell in the past you had much. Okay? But by his. Okay? And I, like, I just want to hear what he's going to say through you. I tell you that honestly. That's what I saw even while we were preaching, okay? That, that right, it's like a, please stand up. I'm going to pray for you, okay? Right in your belly, okay? If I touch you there, okay? Right here rises up the voice of heaven, of her destiny, purpose, and plan that silences the enemy and releases that abundant life coming out her mouth and changing every situation around her. Now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anything go on with your stomach? No. Okay, what goes on with your stomach? Okay, that's changing. That's changing. Literally, I felt something shift when I was just praying, and the Lord's like, that's her digestion. <laughs> I'm like, that wasn't what I was praying for. And he's like, no, that was her digestion. So something is shifting. Are you on medication now for it? You are? You're not going to need it. Is it prednisone? What are you on? Okay. All right. Uh, stand up again. I'm going to pray for you. That wasn't my plan. It's his plan. Father, I thank you that completed work that was done in Christ is done now in her 
you foul enemy of pain and disruption, leave her body now in Jesus' name. Completely. Everything that came with it, anxiety, stress, pain, out. You shall be there no longer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It's done. I came to talk to you about your mouth, but he, uh, he had different plans. You're done. Now, of course, I'm not going to tell anybody to get off medication or any of that, but as you begin to tell it's done, don't be, um, find out from the spirit if you go back and have it checked again, you know, where you are on that. I'll give you a testimony. I was diagnosed, uh, and I didn't know I was coming to you for this. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 16, 13 or 16, and uh, told me I'd be on medicine the rest of my life. But Jesus, and I'm completely healed. And they say, you must have never had it. Great testimony for Jesus. It's done. Amen. All right. Now, I hope you guys will come back tomorrow night. We'll yes. grow. Bring Share, some people. Yeah, bring some friends with you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, how we've defined our Christian realities from the world's definitions and how that's held us back. And so we're going to dive into what God actually means when he talks about yep. things that, who we are. So even as you're writing things down, you might be thinking, I can't put this on. I, there's no way. It's probably because you're defining it the way the world has defined it, not how the word defines it. Yep. So we're going to be talking about that. And then we're going to lay hands on everybody tomorrow. Yep. No matter how many people show up, yep. it's going to be good. So, yeah, invite people. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. And if you need prayer before you go, come on down. No, okay? No, tomorrow. I, I will still we pray refuse for you. To pray. I will no, still, just kidding. I'll still pray for you. <laughs> this is what marriage and the kingdom looks like. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're one, so I'll pray. He'll walk out. No, just kidding. All right? But if you have questions or need prayer, come on up. Okay? Yep. All right? Pastor Jeff? <laughs>